Hi, welcome to a self cat tutorial with uh, me, JJ. Um, I'm an architect based in London and um, I just want to show you how this tool self cat can be used to actually create really intriguing and complex geometry like what you can see in the screen. This one here is um, what we're going to be building today. So um, something that you know you can do um, with maybe slightly more complex uh, modeling software like Maya, Rhino, but this one we're going to show you how to do it with in self cat in a much easier and intuitive way. It makes it feel like you're sculpting. So um, first of all, we're going to open self cat uh, In my last tutorial, I covered the interface a little, you know, how to um, build a very simple rectilinear building. So first we're going to launch editor. Um, and that will take us into self-cat. Um, we will have to create a new project. Um, for this, I'm not going to be too concerned about the sizes because that's something that we can adjust according to our needs once we're in the environment. So, very familiar environment, um, like any other modeling software, where so you've got the grid. And we're going to look at um, Calatrava in particular. He's really uh, famous architect who has a very uh, who also has a background in engineering so he's able to create these beautiful bridges structures and his design always reminds me of a little bit like a bird taking flight so um, this can be achieved with a few tools like that we're going to be covering today which i will talk you through so first of all um, we're going to use 3d sketch and we're going to turn on the grid to be on um, um, back and front and just turn off the top and bottom and we can adjust it so it's on the edge of the screen uh, edge of the workspace and we're going to offset it a little to be on 300 and we're going to be using the spline to um, start to draw this first loft profile we're going to start with the the edge of the wing that will be the highest point and um, we're going to take it to the middle of the, the workspace so remember this is in, in elevation view and we're going to then drag it downwards. You want this to be the straight edge because that's the, the axis that we're going to be mirroring our wings to be. So um, similar to Calatrava's architecture, you've got that, um, he mirrors them. And whether you want to, you can then perform deformer um, tools on top of it just to break the symmetry. So once you have that rough outline, um, I, will, I will turn on vertices and start to move the vertex into into place. So it creates a much more smooth transition between the vertex points. So, you know, take your time here. There's no rush. I will just pick them and slowly just fine tune them. Again, we are not using any reference images. So this really is um, a good time to just let your artistic side, you know, shine through. <laughs> just have fun with it. Just move them around and uh, try to get them in the right place. Um, obviously, this part that I'm adjusting now is close to the spine, so you want to be thicker. And on the edge, you can you can just taper off to be a lot thinner. So you've got this um, wing-like quality to it. So once you're done, you hit cross. That will just um, consolidate the the shape. Right, so now we, we would want to create um, a similar profile on the other side of this geometry. So um, I would hit move while holding control down and I'm going to play it at minus 300. So it's about the same relationship as the first profile to the edge of the um, workspace. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to then hit, you know, turn on vertices and um, we're going to start to then manipulate these vertex points. Um, so it's not exactly the same, it, you know, you really have to, um, you really want to just create a different profile on the other end of this geometry, just so that when you loft it across, it, um, it creates a much more interesting transition. You don't want it to just, I mean, otherwise it's, ju it's just going to be a straight extrusion. So we want to um, utilize um, the loft tool to create this um, very nice, smooth um, transition between the different profiles. Um, we're gonna make we're, for, for example we're gonna make this edges a little bit sharper so um, you know you it goes from a concave to a convex on the other end 
and as you can see, what I'm trying to do is also, you know, just um, just making the, the the whole idea is just to turn on the pra parallel projections, just so you're looking in looking at it in elevation, and just make the two profiles very different. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm also going to create one in the middle, and the one in the middle I'm going to almost create the opposite of our first two profiles and do the same thing you hold down control while using the move tool and uh, I'm going to select quite a number of these ones and uh, deselect those and then bring those um, edges downwards so that this side of the profile dips in it's a little bit like the, the movement of, of, um, of wings so you flap up and you flap down. And don't worry about this because the loft tool is incredibly powerful and it, it will be able to process this as you will see. It will create a really nice transition between the different profiles. There you go. So it's really smooth. Um, obviously this is the mesh view. I'm going to turn on mesh and wireframe. I'm going to have to save those changes to finalize the loft. And, um, we're going to then delete those profiles because we don't need them anymore. Um, as you can see, let's zoom in a little so we can have a look at the wireframe. It's incredibly high resolution, which is which is perfect for what we're going to do. Um, so that's your, that's your main chunk of the geometry. And what we're going to do next is we're going to then create cubes. These cubes, um, we're going to have to play with them. We're going to have to test to see what's the best width that we want because we're going to use this cube to um, carve away to boolean um, our our loft that we just created. So I'm just going to move it in place, and then we're going to just close that so we can then start to manipulate it and scale. It's much easier to control with the scale tool, and we're going to use um, um, snap to snap it to the side. And then we're going to bring it that drag it down again by scaling. And then another really useful tool is the copy offsets. So the copy offsets, um, we're going to use the Z axis um, to copy it across. We're going to use the 30, so that should cover everything. And don't worry if it overlaps because we can actually delete them. So let's just merge all of these objects together. And then we're going to pick these two because you can only have two objects when you're using the stitch and scoop to Boolean. Let's save it before we do things like this. It's always really good to save so that if um, things go wrong, you can actually go back to where you were. Okay, so we're going to do a um, exclusion. So that didn't work. We're going to try it again. Make sure we pick the right objects to subtract. Let self cat do its magic. And there you go. As you can see, um, because our uh, our cube that we used to subtract to subtract were, uh, was quite thin, so what we're left with is with um, is much wider wings. And maybe that's not what we want. We want it to be thinner, so it's a bit more slender. So I'm gonna take the same cube. What I, I just undid what I just did, and um, I've scaled it to be a bit wider. And I'm doing the same thing by copy offsetting and putting it in place. We merge it again, and because just now it wasn't quite cutting through the entire object, we're gonna scale it so it covers all of it. And we're going to then position it in place so it's more or less in the middle. And same thing, stitch and scoop, and we're going to use boolean difference. Make sure we've got the right one selected. Let's try it again. Yep. And let it do its thing again. So again, if, you've, if, if it doesn't look right, just undo it and redo it. There you go, that's much better. It's much better. So let's finalize that Boolean difference. Oh, check it in different angles. See if you're happy with it. I'm quite happy with it. It looks it looks very slick. The next thing I'm gonna do is I would like to um, 
keep the edges um, close to the axis straight so that when we mirror it over, um, they don't overlap too much. They actually, um, um, you know, when we mirror the other side of the wings, it can be attached quite, quite seamlessly. So same tool again, we're going to do a Boolean difference so we can keep a straight edge on, that, on, on, on the geometry. Okay, we're happy with that. That looks very nice. Let me finalize it. So there you go. We've got one side of the wing. Looking nice and neat. And the next thing I would like to do is actually start to create structural members that that um, anchor this building down to the ground. We're going to create height segments so we can start to uh, manipulate um, um, the, uh, the profile of this uh, cube. Before I, before I do that, actually, it's quite good um, practice to simplify objects so we can keep the geometry um, as simple as possible. As you can see, um, you can see the mesh is much simpler, so it makes the file a lot lighter. So I'm going to create that, that structural member again. Um, let's put it in place. We can scale it accordingly. So it sits right in between every two pieces of those wings. And I'm gonna, again, bring it to that corner so we can also then mirror this structural member. Now you see what I mean by adding those extra subdivisions in height so that you can, you can start to um, tighten it in different segments. This, because these columns, they're usually a lot thicker at the bottom and, and you want this, this middle ring to perhaps follow the, the form and the shape of um, your wing itself. Okay. You can bring, up a, bring that true loop section to bring it a bit higher so you bring the entire loop upwards that we can bring it down a little. This this is a little bit like what we were doing with the wing. You can spend a bit of time just tweaking it. See what see what looks right, see what looks nice. And we can finalize that. We can make the base a little bit thinner as well if we like. Try something different. And let's finalize that. So we've got our first leg and we can use the same tool again to copy it across. Copy offset. There you go. So it's a distance of 26. And we can delete the last one. And then we can merge all of them together. So there you go. We've got a rough outline of one side of our building. We've got the dynamic movement of the wings and the repetitiveness of the legs. And now we're going to use three D drawing to draw to draw the sp a spline on the outside. This this would be my curtain walling that would sit right outside the edges of the um, the wings. And I'm just going to ver draw very roughly the position of, of it and then we'll have to switch to the um, to other views to make sure that they um, they match up with uh, these edges. So we're going to go to the side view and again we're going to turn on vertex and we're going to push and pull them so that they match up to our wings. While you're doing this, make sure that you're in parallel projection. That's the best way that you can get um, accurate alignments in your in your design. There you go. You can check in plan view as well. 
you can get a better idea of what which vert vertices are not in the right place as you can see even though the geometry is really heavy you know seemingly complex you can move about in self cat really really quite fast and that's what i really enjoy using in self cat it doesn't it, it doesn't have much lag to it and the interface is easy to use okay i'm happy with that and i'm going to close that and finalize that form i'm going to make a copy and pull it downwards and, and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create change this a little by mirroring so you got your peaks in uh, the opposite direction and I'm going to mirror it again, left to right. So I've mirrored it twice. So, so it's almost an um, an opposite mirror of um, of of the ex the first line that we drew. And what I'm going to do with this is, I'm going to use it to loft the two lines together. Before I do that, what I want to try and do is, I, I think I'd like to make it a bit more dramatic. So again, undoing can be super useful in this. When you see that it doesn't look right and you want to tweak it, undo it and then redo the, the same action. And right now I'm going to loft it. By adjusting the smoothness, you can increase the subdivision. So I think seven looks about right. And what, what I'm going to do is, um, this, for this curtain wall, I want it to be a little bit more interesting. <clears throat> I'm going to start to pick these edges, which I'm going to use as a path to, to stretch an object along it. But before I can do that, I need to select them and extract them. So I'm using edge selection and ensuring that I've got loop selection turned on. And I'm going to go through them and pick all these loops, all these lines. Super easy. Just make sure that you've got loop selection turned on. And I'm going to copy it down and put it back in place and I'm gonna for now hide that mesh hide that loft that we created and I'm gonna simplify these lines you can see so you've got quite a lot of points there but if you simplify it I'm gonna simplify it again it drop we're gonna we're gonna try and put um, five and you can see it's a lot more spread out Similar like how what we did to the um, the wings by simplifying the lines it keeps it a lot lighter And I'm going to draw a cylinder in place and I'm going to select the cylinder and the lines and use a follow path and turn on wrap and make sure that's on its top orientation And there you go it Looks nice. And I'm going to merge them all together And now you can see those are the, um, they are, they, they are mullions, they're mullions on the curtain wall. You can also look at them as, um, they're like, they're like structural bits for, for example, if you have a green wall, you can imagine, you can imagine that as, um, a bit of a structural, um, member of holding up the mesh for your creepers to grow onto and now i'm going to draw the the, gr the ground plane and for the ground plane i'm going to have it intersect the mesh itself and have it right where our structural legs are coming down so it creates a, a floor a structural slab for our building i'm 
let's let's adjust some colors so we can start to differentiate i'm going to put um where we think it's going to be concrete solid white and gray for the ground and then for the mesh i've i've um i've given it an opacity earlier on so it looks a little bit like glass now i'm gonna now i'm gonna create use um a cube to draw floor rafters and again i'm gonna position it right in between where our two legs are let's put it in place i'm going to create two sets of these one is on the top of where the wings are and the other is um right below it again copy offset so now we've established that 26 is the distance between each of them so we're going to use 26 and copy 21 of them over as we've learned from our previous one as I said, we're going to copy that downwards. So it creates these floor joists that run in between these wings. I'm going to close that to finalize this. Let's last check and see if it looks about right. those objects that we just created actually not all of them let's just let's mirror the um the wings first for the wings we want to do something different on this side although it's the same we want to have it the opposite direction so again you can play with the axis to create different forms of mirror whether you want to mirror it on the um, front and back left and right and now we're going to mirror those um floor pieces. So I've mirrored it along around the edge. I'm going to bring it down, put it in place. Another one that we need to do next is um, mirroring the structural legs. Let's try that again. So let's um, change that, undo it. So we mirror it on the right edges and then we're going to drag it across so there you have it so our building is starting to look look a little bit more complete we're going to move the floor up again because this program allows you to design and go and um and develop your ideas as you go so as you can see i'm not too precious about my ideas Grouping is also a really useful tool. If you want to drag an entire, a few objects at the same time, you can group them and you can mirror them as well. As you can see, the geometry is looking really nice and clean. That's, that's actually something that is really useful if you plan to 3D print your objects. You can 3D print them. You can you can have them printed out and sketched on top of it on top of it so what i've done is i've taken the mesh and i've uh, selected the edges just to drag it down so that it meets the floor quite nicely instead of having a hole there's nothing to say that you don't you could you shouldn't have a hole you can have a hole in there again this is just this is just testing out ideas seeing if i extend it out you know, if I create a floor in, in between, yeah. So a floor that sits above the floor rafters. So as you can see, you know, to create the form to a level of what we have right now, really useful tools, loft, loop selection and edge, and then using Boolean to cut Cut these wings into pieces and then you can do loft again for for the mesh on the front where the curtain wall is and then you can pick those edges again and then you can you can extract them you can then use the follow path 
to create these pipes that go through them. Really, really useful tools. And of course, stitch and scoop to create Boolean differences. And that, and that big cube that I just drew at the top, it just kind of becomes um, a spine for the entire building to hold it in place, a little bit more rigid. Okay, now let's say if we copy it across, you know, you can imagine this as an airport. This is one of the, the terminals, okay. But what I didn't quite like about just copying across is, is you could see that the transition between them are, are not that seamless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group them, as I mentioned before, and I'm going to mirror them. First, let's try left and right. No, nope, that's not what we want, because we want it by the side. So we're going to pick right. No, nope, that's not right, but that's okay. Back actually works really well. And you can then continue again, and the workspace will just increase in size for you. So that's really nice. I, I really like the transition and where that peak is. And what we can do is at the peak, we can actually introduce one more structural member to hold hold that up and it and it almost acts in tension. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna create a cylinder. I'm gonna drag it in place. I'm gonna first scale it to be as tall. I can drag it in place to where our, our mirror line was. And I'm gonna rotate it. Again, let's go to parallel projection. Go. For this, you need to make sure that you've got your, in advanced settings, you can drop the step size down so you can have it a little bit more precise. So for this, we're gonna go down to one. There you go. And we're gonna position it in place. So there you have it. I'm quite happy with the building as they are, as it is. You can get quite interesting internal views with um, with this building that we just created. We're gonna ungroup it, and um, we're gonna give those mesh um, transparency again, so you can look right into them. So what what I would like to highlight in this tutorial is the fact that. You can treat self cat as um as as a as a as a tool a really useful tool for you to start to de develop ideas that that you 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 can't really even imagine in your head because it's so complex but it's super easy to put them together in a software that allows you to undo make save as go back to where you were make changes. And as you can see in this in this view, you create an object that looks almost like you're inside a rib cage. It's really dynamic. It's really pretty, and and you can you can three D print that out as well. And not only internal views, but external views. For example, like looking at it at at an angle like this, for example. Or, or a different side where where it's a little bit, the opposite of it. Only through only through the use of mirroring it across to the other side, you know, I would say just you, you can start with drawing a three D sketch with splines and adjusting it like what I did. It's 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 you you don't even have to start with a three D cube. You can just start with lines. And sometimes, but sometimes, if your building is a little bit more rectilinear, yes, by all means, use rectangles adjust them. I really hope that this tutorial has taught you a few very useful tips to create a complex geometry and actually give you the courage to just step into self-care and just have fun. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for listening. See ya!